morning, everyone. It is August 2nd, oh, the day before our 49th wedding anniversary. Amazing. It's been that long. Anyway, I'm Colette, the Highway Stitcher. I'm here to give you my stitching from the highway and at home. And uh, it's kind of been crazy. It's been like over a month. And so I'm just, I need to stop these uh, long pauses in between because uh, <laughs> it makes it really hard to all of a sudden pick everything up and say, okay, what am I going to show you? What am I going to forget? Which is always easy thing for me is forgetting things. And so I'm just like, oh my, no more of this. I'm going to try to keep more regular after this. It has been since the last time I talked to you, um, I was getting ready to head to the National Bobbin Lace Convention and that was over a month ago, and now it's the first, the second of August. So, way too long. Anyway, I'm Colette, the Highway Stitcher. I'm here to give you my stitching from the highway and at home. Um, it's about 70 degrees here right now. It has been like 100 plus for the last several weeks, but we had some thunderstorms come in and it cooled us down a little. Not a whole lot. It's supposed to still be about 85 today, but... Um, you know, 21 degrees Celsius here right now, going up to 27 Celsius is pretty good for, uh, not too bad for all you, all my friends that are way all over the world, um, give you an idea of what our weather is like right now. I'm hoping that it stays cool for a while, but we'll see. It's supposed to end up warming up again. Um. I have a lot of travel stitching, of course. I have uh, some, well golly, I have a couple FOs. That's amazing for me, which I'm excited about. I was able to write them down in my uh, my uh, booklet, um, you know, telling, oh, I finished two projects. Amazing, amazing. And uh, show you my whips, show you the lace that I did during convention. Also tell you some of the places that I've been besides Lace Convention and a uh, little bit about, you know, how the rest of this last month has been going. It's been busy. I have been doing a lot of stitching. Um, wasn't in the mood to do any filming. And so not until right now did I really feel like doing any. So, um, but I figured if I don't do it pretty soon, <laughs> This is going to be way too long of a video as it is. Sit back, relax, get whatever you like to drink, whatever you like to do, because this is going to take a while anyway. And so I didn't want it to take even longer than what it's going to take today to do. <laughs> so I, before I begin, um, I don't always say this enough. I just want to tell you I appreciate all you guys so much. It's um, It's been quite quite a fun um fun crazy last few years. Uh, I do enjoy showing you my projects and what I'm working on and I'm so glad that you like to join with me. Thanks to all you guys who have been watching me for a long time and thanks to you who might be new and just watch me now and I hope that there's something that you like in my eclectic mix bag of, bag of tricks like Felix the Cat used to do, say um, in the old cartoons. Um, it's Instead of bag of tricks it's my bag of mix different uh, whips. Bag of, bag of whips is what I'll call it. So I'm going to move on now and uh, hopefully as I go through, I'm going to go through this stuff and as I do, I'm going to mention maybe some of the um, things I was doing along with, with it, whether it was um, events I went to, whatever, and um, that way, you know, I, I can mix them in with my actual whips and finished objects. Um, it's been too long really since I've been to this place is to really pull out tons of stuff and show you I would probably forget most of the people that I should be thanking and all of that so I'm just going to do just a um, just a couple things from it uh, mention a couple things that have to do with whips that I'm working on um, as far as the events so so anyway I'm going to move on like I said, I'm excited. I've got some FOs. And the first one is this one right here. Quaker Bees from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And um, I thought I would get this one done a lot faster than I did. It's uh, it um, 
went, you know, it was like one of those that seemed like really fast and, and easy to do, but it did take longer than I thought. And, um, but I did finish it up. And um, here it is. So I stitched this on, um, it's a fabric flare. It's a honeycomb, it's called honeycomb. And uh, it is 32 count Lugana. And I'm using the called for uh, Gentle Arts sampler threads for this, except for one of them. And uh, the one that I subbed out, we were supposed to have wheat fields and I subbed out Harvest Moon because I like the brighter I like the brighter color of it in contrast to this fabric. So the only sub was um, Harvest Moon for wheat fields, if you decide to, to pick up the piece and want to know. The rest is all the same, all the same um, fabric. So, And um, if you want to know more about um, Fabric Flare is the fabric that is just printed on the front, not on the back. I don't care if you see the back of my piece. Doesn't matter to me. I am not a uh, very neat stitcher, but I don't care. I'm happy, <laughs> happy with it. Anyway, um, fabric flare is printed on the front, as you can see, not on the back. It has all kinds of, um, you know, prints up all kinds of fabric that uh, you can use for kind of accentuating a special part of the piece that you're stitching. Um, I wouldn't use it all the time. And I think it probably could take over a, um, piece and not really um, it'd be overwhelming too much for it but in some cases I think fabric flare just works wonderfully for some some stitches and in this case I just fell in love with the thought of the honeycomb and it uh, it just adds to this piece a lot so if you're interested I'll have down in my description box below um, uh, the website for Stitchery Express and um, it's actually stitcheryexpress.com with an X instead of EX Express. Um, but I will have that below in case anyone's interested in checking out what she's got. And also you can call her on the phone and find out what other fabric flare fabrics that she does have. So that was my FO for one of my FOs that I got done. And the other FO I got done, which I'm excited about, which I want to get... I want to get this framed as soon as possible, and then um, it's going to be part of my um, my videos every week. This is look for the beauty and everything. This is just a perfect um, perfect stitch for me, because as you know, a lot of times I pull this out and I say look for the beauty in every day. Um, just important to me that people realize that it's out there. No matter how no matter how difficult their days may be, no matter how um, bleak things might look wherever you look you're going to see some beauty in 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 our world and um you know i just would just my little my little what is it called um public announcement a pa <laughs> is remember to look for that beauty because it's out there anyway i finished this a couple weeks ago here it is this is by Bent Creek. I'm stitching. I stitched it on a 32 count uh, color and cotton Swiss coffee, and I used all the called for threads, which are all classic color works. And I'll tell you, this piece, you know, it, it doesn't show the beauty that it really has on video at all. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece in person. And that's what a lot of people say when they see it in person is just, um, you know, really, really pretty. But this is the best I can show it. So this is what you're going to see. I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to get this. Oh, come on, Colette. Framed. I'm going to get this framed as soon as possible. Probably just my local Hobby Lobby because they actually know how to frame stitch pieces. And if I want something done fast and relatively cheap, I go to them. So that's what my plan is going to be. I'm going to go there and look for um, a frame that I like. Um, hopefully this will fit. I haven't checked. Hopefully this will fit a regular size frame so I, won't, so I can buy one like half price and not spend um, too much on it. And um, then I will have it framed and up and uh, as my perfect perfect piece so 
And for some reason, I keep getting text messages here. And I have it on silent. And I'm going just, just right when I want to not even hear anything. I should have just put my phone somewhere else. And hopefully you guys aren't hearing all the buzz, 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 buzz. So let me see if there's anything else about this one that um, I don't want to want to mention. So I don't think so. Because I don't want to. I don't want to miss something if I miss something, but nope, this is it. I always have to have notes. My my older brain dictates that I have notes. Otherwise, I will forget to tell you something. And then you will have to come back and ask me what that is. So, okay, I'm going to move on to whips now. So, and um, I just pulled this out first because usually this is what I do first anyway, and it was on the top. So this is the temperature Quaker piece. This is a temperature piece that I'm doing this year. Um, every now and again, I'll, I'll do a temperature piece, not every year, but if I, see, if I see a pattern I like a lot, then I do it, and I think it's kind of fun. So this is my temperatures for Lehigh, Utah, and uh, it started out, of course, right here in January. So we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, and into July. I'm not totally finished yet with July. I'm not caught up. Um, I think I'm about to the 18th of July. So I do need to catch up on this, which I plan on doing this next week. Um, this is such a pretty piece. I'm stitching this on a 40 count, just a, a flax, a Zweigart flax, one over one, one thread over one, one thread over two, sorry, over two fabric threads. Um, as you can tell by the colors, these are, I love the colors. Um, oh, this, sorry about that. Sorry about this. Um, this is a piece that um, was designed by Stitch and Mommy on Etsy. So that's where you can find this. Um, when she designed this one, I like the colors that she chose for it. Um, they're a little more muted, but I think they work really good for, for a Quaker piece. And yet they still show you the, you know, how the temperatures changed and ranged and and I love it because you know I've got a lot of those really cold colors for the winter months and then kind of the the just the sort of the gradual change in April right there as things started going back and forth like they always do in Utah to uh, you know like bouncing from higher to lower temperatures all the time and then kind of in the middle there just starting to work into 70s and some 70s and 80s and now these really dark ones are over 100 and some of the other ones are like in the 90s so um, that's kind of what we've been experiencing here um, but i like the way it's been um, been working its way out so i've been happy with that and when I chose that for our area, she has several different temperature ranges. I mean, like uh, charts that you can pick from. And I used, if you want to know um, if you have the piece, I used the varied temperatures, um, which generally works pretty good for Utah. I mean, you know, that I could probably have done a little bit of a change, maybe, possibly for the real high and the real low, because it's just 100 and over, and we have had maybe about two or three days of like 103. So, you know, I could have had a different kind of red in there, but, and I could have had a different kind of cold color too, but it's, it's for the most part, I think working out nice and looking good. So that's my temperature Quaker. And uh, I, like I said, I have to catch up on that. So that will be, that will be some um, of my plans for this coming week. So. Oh, well, sorry, I didn't show it. So many things to remember when you're videoing. I haven't videoed in so long. That's actually what the piece is going to look like, guys. So, when it's all done. This is just black and white, of course, but that gives you an idea of what the rest of the motifs look like and um, what I'm actually, where I'm actually at. So, which, of course, as you can see, I was filling in this right here. Yep. So, this I'm going to put over here because I'm going to have to use that again for a couple of my other pieces, that notebook. Okay, 
Uh, next piece. This one, I've got to show you the picture online. It is um, a frosted pumpkin. It's the frosted pumpkin cell that started a couple months ago. And it's this piece right here. It's called Castle Homecoming. And this is what's um, what's been released so far. Been enjoying this. This has been a, a fun stitch. I like Frosted Pumpkin. It's such cute patterns, but I also love castles, dragons, things like that. So I'm stitching this on um, 32 count um, Be Stitched Me Frost Lugana. Thought it worked out nice for this. Uh, the colors, uh, I'm using the DMC colors on it, and the colors seem to pop and look nice with, uh, with this color. So that's why I chose this, even though they did have a regular, um, you know, you could buy the fabric, you could buy like a kit for it if you wanted, but usually when I do Frosted Pumpkin cells, I just kind of look at my own um, store of fabric <laughs> and I find something that works pretty good. I have not started on the third part yet, which when you saw the picture would have been uh, the dragon down um, probably on the lower right hand side and the little knight. But the January, I mean January, we started this two months ago, so I think it was May and June or June and July. Yeah, I think that's how it was. Anyway, I think we started in June on this and so I finished up the first two months of it and I'm really enjoying it. They don't always, ha they don't have a lot of back stitching in there, so it's really fun. But the little back stitching they have really, really makes it pop and look nice. So, so, so and my plans will be to get to work on the, uh, on the third section. Okay, the next piece that I'm going to show you is, um, a piece that we've been doing as a cell, a group of friends and I, and other people have been joining in. Um, this is Drawn Threads Sunnyside Sampler. Oh, I'm all proud of this. I went to um, the, um, there was a class in Silver Needle, what was called Summer Cross Stitch Extravaganza, I think. Wait, Grand Summer Stitchers Extravaganza. That's what it was, 2023, where they'll have like a couple designers and um, they come talk and we get, you know, special pieces just designed for us. So I had to go here and I really wanted to meet Cynthia. Cynthia says she watches my videos. I'm going, oh my goodness gracious. I said, a designer watches my videos. I'm just like floored. So if you're watching me, Cynthia, please excuse foot in mouth, you know, like going like... <laughs> Just going, oh my goodness, I'm fangirling you. But I am. She signed my copy here. And um, she told me that she was wondering why so many people, she didn't know that there was a cell for the Sunnyside Sampler. And she said, I couldn't understand why everybody was like trying to buy this kit. She said they kept like, I just kept getting people contacting me. <laughs> trying to buy this kit and I just thought that was so funny I said oh my goodness I said I we whenever we decide to do a sell from now on just the couple of us that do it Brenda and me and um we're, we're gonna have to like tell people ahead of time what we're doing because it just kind of went crazy and so now Cynthia knows but uh she was just she was going I could not believe all the people trying to get this kit so, so there's my little signature from Cynthia um it was so grand to meet you. Oh, it was wonderful. Really enjoyed it. I am not totally caught up. I need to be working on the next section past that cute blue house, light blue house. But, you know, that's because I decided to wait till I went to Silver Needle to meet Cynthia and to work on this piece there and work on the section I was supposed to be working on. And because of that, you know how it is, you don't ever really get much stitching done at a class or a retreat so I'm behind a little bit but that's fine um, you know I still have a couple weeks to catch up on the next on the next house so 
So here it is. I'm stitching this on 32 count vintage country mocha. I'm using two threads, two floss threads over two linen threads on this. Um, of course, on the over one, I'm just using one thread. And um, oh, what else? I'm using all the silks that come with it. Um, but I'm using two strands instead of one. I kind of prefer a brighter, more colorful look. That's the reason why, you know, the prim looks nice too, but that's just me. I like a brighter, brighter look. I also did some other changing out of this. So if there's things that you're working on, you know, there's so many little, there's so many little things I did to change out colors on this that I can't explain every single one of them to you. So if there's something that you're doing and you're not happy with color wise, if you think it's blending too much into the back of your piece, just contact me. I'd be happy to let you know maybe kind of what I did or um, what I changed to. And I didn't change to anything that was totally off of these colors. Whatever I changed was just taking other colors from the called for silks and then I put them in place of the ones that I felt did not pop out good enough for me. So anyway, um, remember if you're, well, I know we're getting late in the year now because pretty soon this sow will be over with, but it, you know, anybody can join anytime. We've got a couple hashtags on Instagram. One of them is Sunnyside Sampler Sal, and the other one is um, Oct Oct to Oct, or October to October Sal. It's O-C-T T-O-O-C-T Sal. You can use either hashtag and post your pictures. We'd love to see them. We're excited that everybody um, that so many people have wanted to join in on this and it has been a really fun stitch. I've really enjoyed it. So, um, and while I'm talking about our October to October sell, um, I didn't mention we started this at Stitch West in Utah. That's just been kind of a tradition for the last few years is starting. Um, we start our, our sell in October. We finish it in October. And of course, this one pretty soon will be coming up to October again. And um, Brenda and I were discussing, and our other friend Kim were discussing what we were going to do for that cell. It took us, as Brenda mentioned in her um, floss tube, Handwork Maniac, it, um, it took us a little bit of time to figure out what we wanted to do. It didn't come as easy to us this time. But we did come, we did. Let me see. I've got it here somewhere. There we go. We did uh, decide on the sow that we're going to do in October so people have a little bit of time uh, to gather together their materials to start in October, um, especially if they're at Stitch West. It would be fun for them to, you know, be able to come and start it there. So this will be our sow starting in October, um, our Oct to Oct sow. We'll also figure out another hashtag for it, too. It's, um, I kind of call it the birdhouse piece. It's a Jardin Privé pattern. Um, it's all in French, au fil de Nicours, which I do not know how to say that. I may have a French name, people, but that's only because my mom fell in love with the name when she was over in, in Europe after World War II. Other than that, I have no French ties at all, so I cannot say this. But anyway, it is a Jardin Privé pattern. That is the name of it. I'll keep that up on the screen there for any of you who want to look it up. Um, I'm going to call it the birdhouse sow, probably. But as you can see, there's all these fun birdhouses in different parts of the season. So, you know, like in the fall, in the summer, in the winter, just, um, you know, all all kinds of birdhouses in different seasons of the year. Um, I know you can get this at one two three stitch, though they were out the last time somebody told me. Since people are beginning to buy them, but um, we contacted one two three stitch and they will get in more of them. If you want to get them from an actual store, it was mentioned to me that Keepsakes is going to have them and get more of them. Um, or just try your local store to ask them if they, uh, if they don't have, you know, Jardin Privé patterns, ask them if they could please, um, order one for you. Um, at my next floss tube, I'm going to try to look for more places that do have, um, that probably do have this for sure. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that if you went to, um, Silver Needle or contacted them or, uh, 
uh, Stitcher's Paradise in Las Vegas. They have so many things. I know they got Chard and Purvey. They might have it there. Um, you know, there's I, some of the big needlework stores, I'm sure, have it too. Or just check online. Just make sure you type in that name and you might run into it in another online stitching store. So, so that will be our sell for our October to October sell for this year. Brenda mentioned it on Handwork Maniac, and I'm mentioning it too so that we have, you know, so, you know, you have more of an idea. It's more out there of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to post this on my Instagram. This is just a black and white picture, but I wanted to give you an idea. Um, in our cells, we section them off uh, one a month, so you'll know how much to stitch every month. And um, by sectioning them, they will all be done come October. This one was easy to section. I liked that. As you can see, you can see the, the pencil lines I have down there for each section. So now all you have to do is just start up and do the stitching within that section. And then you can wait around till the next month and do the next section. So that's the sectioned off area for us. And um, I thought I would just mention that here since I was showing Sunnyside Sampler that uh, that's what our style is going to be for the coming year. When I have any more other information, I'll, um, I'll let you know. And um, feel free to join us. The more the merrier. It's, it's been fun. And it's been fun to see more and more people's pictures and everything. So, okay. My next whip. Oh, okay. Whip go. Um, my whip go choices, I mean, my whip go picks for this month, I also did the work for them um, this month and got it done. Whip go is the brainchild of Jesse Marie of Jesse Marie Does Stuff. Um, if you don't know what whip go it is, it is a form of bingo, but you put your cross stitch pieces in the blocks. And when the, when the number is chosen, then you have your own goal set for what you want to do for that particular piece when it's chosen that month. Mine, my um, my goals are three days of stitching. I don't have a certain amount of stitches. Um, right now it's just been three days. It's been, I've been able to work that out pretty well. Sometimes I can get like 13 to 1500 stitches in those three days. Other days I'm lucky to get 600, but at least it's I'm working on it three days. This piece, one of my Whipple pieces, um, I hadn't worked on since 2018. Um, but it was a favorite of mine, and um, so I put it on, on my Whipco board. This is really all I can show you, because the rest of it is the actual pattern. It's called Tribal Chicken by, um, I actually, I think this one's Tribal Hen, because they have a tribal rooster and a tribal hen, by White Willow Stitching. Um, fun White Willow has these fun patterns where they're like motifs within that make the shape of the animal, or whatever, and... Um, it's just been, this was really fun to stitch on, and then I just set it aside and didn't stitch on it forever. So now picking it up again, it's it's been, it's been really fun. I did quite a bit on it, so. Before, I was just barely down to, like, the part of her neck there where the motifs are kind of, there's long, long strands of, of a motif, like right about here. So all the rest of that from there on down is what I had worked on my three days. So I'm real happy with that. This is a picture of this plus nocturne, um, 28 count, two threads, two linen thread, I mean two threads over, two floss threads over two linen threads. So it's two over two. This doesn't really show the nocturne color exceptionally well. It's really actually more, it's darker than this. So. I guess it kind of shows a little bit more darkness there when you get it closer. So, I lost the tag on this one, but the only reason I know is because I was like, for a long time, I got, um, before Picture This Plus went to wholesale and started selling to stores only, um, they used to sell to the public and I did my own um, um, Picture This, no, or maybe I did one from them. I, I had a, um, monthly club. It might have been from them. Sometimes I'll do monthly clubs where I just pick a piece myself each each month. But in this case I think it was probably theirs. 
And this is where I got this because this is back seven, eight years ago when I was stitching on, you know, I stitch on all kinds of counts still, but when I was really only stitching on 28 count. And um, so this, this is when you could get lots of picture of this plus. Um, oh, the floss for this, the monochromatic that I'm using is Sam Gentle Arts Sampler Threads Midnight. It's like a deep, dark blue, navy blue, with some like, um, you know, it's variegated with some lighter and darker. So that's Tribal Hand by White Willow Stitching. So I have to put that away again, but it was fun. This is a piece which I worked on some last year and the year before. I think I started it a couple years ago. Um, Sarah, Stitch -a Mommy, um, Shelly, and I can't remember her floss tube name, sorry Shelly, and then myself, we decided to um, start this. And I think we started it on, on cross stitch, the day of cross stitch in August. It's Kesslin's Cross Stitch Fun. So, I am stitching, this is, was gonna be a huge piece, so I decided to stitch it on 25 count, um, one over one full cross, because I didn't want it super huge. So, this is about the size I wanted it. Um, this is being stitched on um, a Vintage Stormy Night by Zweigart. One of those that's printed on the front and not on the back. And uh, for the threads, I am using 1240 silky weight thread, 12 weight thread in this colorway, like a dark gray. So, anyway, that's the color. Just one thread. I love the way it's looking. It might be a little too thick for some people, but I'm fine with it. I I like the way it looks, um, and it hasn't really caused me major problems too much of thickness-wise, so I'm sticking with it. Uh, I'm just mentioning that because to some people, I think they would think it's too uh, too thick for them. So Sulky works really great on, you know, 36, on... I think at 40 it works pretty good too, though it's getting a little thick on 40. And then 25 over 1, it's a little thick too. So, But 32, 36, it's, you know, pretty nice on. So, that's Kesslin's Cross Stitch Fun. That was my second whip go, whip go um, pick for this month. Okay, um, next... I'm sure that a lot of you have heard about this particular app, but I have to mention it in um, in terms of my piece that I'm working on. Um, the Silk app, right about there. It's an app um, that you can get where you can buy uh, patterns, and um, they're they have a DMC conversion, but they mostly are trying to encourage um, stitching with um, Soie d'Alger um, by Elvira Soie. And that's a silk thread. And so um, I, I downloaded the app. You can buy patterns off of it. It's a really fun, you know, it has patterns you can buy. Um, again, it has a DMC, um, a, you know, the equivalent of it. So if you don't want to use silk, you don't have to. It has a lot of fun patterns on it. And um, during StitchCon, um, the three of us decided that we were going to um, do a silk app piece. Brenda, Handwork Maniac, is doing a piece with little, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's, um, she had like the whole row finished and it was little squares with, with bright colors with that kind of shade through. Um, and Kim and I decided to do this Christmas one that we liked. Um, Cannot say the name. It's a German name. Weinachslan. Again, like I said, foreign language and me don't mix. But that is the actual piece. So as you can see, it's like little blocks with little Christmas designs, little motifs within each block. Kind of reminiscent of a Carolyn Manning pattern, possibly. 
So, and I'm working mine on um, 40 count Lappin Loops. That's a designer of fabric um, in the color of Graveyard Mist. So um, I don't know if you can kind of see this kind of has a grayish blue tinge to it. Mostly kind of an off-white, but it's a cold, colder tones, cooler tones on this. So I'm not sure. Up closer, maybe you can kind of tell, or back here, but it has a cooler color to it, some like uh, tones of gray and blue. Um, this is what I've done so far. I wasn't able to, um, I borrowed my friend Kim's threads to do it. Uh, and so I started it out with her threads. And then when I went home, I ordered, but not every thread was in stock. So um, this is kind of haphazard in what I'm doing for my stitching. I was working on this actually for a daily 30. Some people do a 24 seven where they, um, you know, like do it or 25 seven, they do it for 25 minutes. I do a daily 30 um, where every day I try to stitch on it 30 days. And that's through a um, through a Facebook group that I belong to, and that's what I did to work on this for the last six days, and um, so that's what I've gotten done. Again, some of it I wanted to actually fill it in better, but I don't have the thread yet. I'm waiting for them to come in stock for me to get them. I have there's about four of them that I don't have of the um, Swad Dalje, but it's real pretty. It's a real pretty piece. Really like it. So I would, um, I would like, you know, um, highly recommend the silk app and the pieces that are in it. You know, go take a look at it. It's it's a, it's a fun app and and I'm losing stuff down here. Let's see what's down here. What fell down here? Oh, okay. I don't need that. So, but it's a fun app. So. Okay, my next piece that I worked on is Enchanted Stocking. Oh, Enchanted Ornament Stocking. I don't know why I always forget to put the Enchanted Ornament Stocking. And um, this is a Dimensions Gold Kit. Um, I'm doing this as a sal. Um, every Sunday, there's several of us who do a, a Sunday stocking sal, where we work on our Christmas stockings on Sunday. So. It was started by Amy of Amy Loves Totes. And um, Amy has now finished this one. She got this one done. And I'm still working on it. I have my marching orders. So I might start a marching order sell. Just to let you know, Kim. My friend Kim told me that I have marching orders. She gave me marching orders. And this is one of the pieces that I have to get done this year. She wants me to get it done so I can get it finished for Christmas. Now we'll see. I want to get it done too. Now, as far as getting it fully finished, that might be a little different, but we're going to work on getting it finished. So, and that I will do for my marching orders. And I actually have done quite a bit. Um, I've been keeping up on it. I started in the middle, worked down, and, and got the whole bottom finished and back stitched, and then I started working up along um, the top. So, if you see the top of this, um, the gold metallic, it's at the top of that one ornament, that actually is uh, the part where the name starts coming in as far as um, the stocking goes, because there'll be like a um, area where you stitch in your name. So, actually, there's some more stitching here, a bunch of greenery, and some here, and then I will be done with all the greenery. So that's pretty exciting. Then I'll get to work on my name. So what I did all this last time is I did a bunch of filling in here. And did I do any backstitch there? No, I haven't done the backstitch there yet. I did all, filled in this, filled in this, did this part of the greenery, all this part of the greenery up through there. So. And um, this is a kit, of course. It's a 16 count um, blue Ada, light blue Ada, and with the threads that come with the kit. And after working on this so long, you know how stiff usually the, the dimensions Ada is? 
This feels all nice and soft now. <laughs> I've worked on this way too long. This feels all nice and soft, like more like a regular fabric. So <laughs> anyway, I love it. It's been fun to work on. Every time I, you know, pick it up, I, I love working on it. It's, it's just a joy to work on. So I will continue my marching orders and work on this piece to get it finished. Um, another, I, I got back into doing um, my challenge group, my one challenge group with Daily 30. Um, and because I kind of felt bad, because I kind of felt like, oh my goodness, I'm not doing anything with the group. They should just kick me off because I'm not keeping up on anything. So I went back and, and to look and see what like the two week challenges were, because I thought, oh, I can handle that. Just do two week challenge. And one of them that had just started was the Appalachian week challenge. And so I put down, I looked up things, looked at the questions, thought, oh, I can fit some of my cells in there, get some cell work done. Um, but one of them, um, I couldn't fit any of my cells into or any of my marching orders pieces. So I had to pick a, another random piece because one of the, um, Oh, actually, the Appalachian, take that back. The Appalachian week I'm working on right now, which with some of these. But the one I started on was Shark Week because, you know, in July, during that one week in July, they have all these shark shows all on TV. So they were doing a, a shark um, challenge. And one of the challenge questions was um, stitch on your largest whip. And with mine, all of my largest whips are full coverage, which I love. So I looked through all my whips, and my largest whip was actually Hibiscus Fairy. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be one of my others, but it wasn't. It was actually Hibiscus Fairy. Won them out by just a little bit. Um, it is 400 wide by 566 high. Oh, before I show it, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like. I last worked on this in um, February when I was doing full coverage February. This is such a, oh, the colors in this are so beautiful. And here it is. It's, um, the artwork is by Mer Meredith Dillman on this one. So there's the fairy with the hibiscus all around her and just so sweet, so sweet. Um, I'm working, this is going to be huge, not only because it's my largest whip, but it's also because I'm doing it on 18 count Ada. Um, that is because I had a piece of light pink Ada that I thought would work well with it, an 18 count Ada, and it has actually. I love, I love the touch of pink that is in this. Not I like it a whole lot better than doing a dark, a uh, stark white. And it probably is, um, as I can see here, it's not showing up well. You can't really see the light pink, but it is a, it is light pink and it looks very nice in person with this piece with all the different shades of pinks and reds in it. Um, I'm working across the top for a while there uh, when I had just blocks of color because this is a real fun piece. This doesn't have, it has some confetti but not a lot so far. It probably has more farther on but it has enough changes um, at the beginning of it to where it makes it um, enjoyable and where you're not just stitching one color. So when I started it, in, I didn't start it in February, I started it last year with Sarah because we both liked it and started it together. And so as you can kind of tell from this, there is some like some of one color and then some of another color and then some of another, but they're easy to, um, it's not like just one confetti stitch of that one color. It's like blending into other colors. So I can pull out all these different beautiful salmons, reds, pinks, and everything. So I started out and kind of worked my way down some on it. But when I um, when I started full coverage February, I started branching out. No, I, actually I did do some more of that fill-in. But when I brought this to uh, Stitch Nanigans Retreat in April, which was in Las Vegas, I met Sarah there and um, I decided to go a different route. I decided I wanted to go across the whole top of the piece, even though this is extremely large piece of fabric and an extremely large piece, and I would like to finish the top row in the whole thing, and then I'll start working my way down. So I did 211 stitches for this challenge, and um, 
that is probably from about here to here and filling in some of this down here. And believe it or not, I am still not to the middle part of this piece. I think it is a little bit farther, maybe just pretty close to there. So that's why this is all folded up. You can see how thick this is. It's like if I open up this whole this whole piece of 18 count to, you know, it's just huge. So, so anyway, I'm not quite to the middle yet. I'm looking for that middle, saying, oh good, I can go beyond the middle. So that's, that is a kind of a offshoot piece that I picked up to, to um, finish a challenge on. Okay, my last, I think, yeah, my last whip for the month of July is another full coverage that you're familiar with that I try to do at least a thousand stitches in it each month, but I was bereft. I didn't do as good as I should have done. I got, um, let's see, 644 stitches this month, but I guess with the traveling and with trying to keep up on some other cells and stuff like that, because with me, if I get behind in a cell, I throw it aside and I won't ever work on it again. I've realized that with me if I don't keep up on it. It's just me, but that's what happens. And so I have to keep up on myself. If I don't, I'll just, I just, they'll be thrown into um, craft prison somewhere and they'll never see the light of day again. So they have to come first. But in the meantime, when I had some extra time, I pulled out. Um, my two marching orders projects which are the enchanted ornament stocking which i showed you and lace maker here so i got 644 stitches this month and um so i'm going to work towards a larger goal than that right now i have 58.83 percent finished with 42,355 stitches done total i'm not going to pull it out of the key snaps because there's not really a whole lot extra to show you um, when I do have something more to show you, I will pull it out. I have done that on previous videos if you want to look back and see what it looks like total. Most of the work down here for the 644 is this black here, and this black here, that black there. And over here, there was a cream color where there was a large amount of fill-in. I was getting burned out with the confetti, and I thought, you know, I better stop just confetti in it and move to something that's a block of color and there isn't a whole lot of blocks of color left in this but there was in the black and then when I searched my colors there was for this little creamy color here section so that got me excited about it again before I was working I'd take a and before I loved it but I was just beginning I was just beginning to feel like oh I'm just getting tired of this so that's why I switched to doing blocks of color this month. Before, what I was doing is I was taking my highest unworked block, a little block of, you know, stitches, and then just um, filling it in down in cross country. Because I actually do like cross country. I, I find it fun. So I was just filling those in. And by doing that, I ended up completing two colors totally. There's no more of two colors because I brought them all the way down to here, and that was the last of them. So that was kind of fun. But then when I looked recently, most of my other blocks of color, even though there's one that's only 27 stitches left, it's like way down here and I'm, I'm not gonna cross country that far. I just don't wanna bother, so. So anyway, this was blocks of, blocks of color month on this. So, and that's what's been accomplished this month on Lace Maker. So my marching orders for this is just to get lots more of it done. Um, I, it's not it's not doable to have a finish at all, but it is doable to have a good percentage of it done, and so that's what I'm working forward towards on on this piece. So, okay, so that's all of my whips, um, plans, and then after plans, I'm going to go into my lace. So, um, you know, you're welcome to stay or go. If you want, you can stay and see what I've done for my lace making, or you may leave because you're done with just cross stitching. Okay, my plans. Let me see here. I know I've got it. Here we go. 
I have another cell that I'm behind in, and I have got to pick up, pick it up, and pick up the, pick up the pace because um, I want to finish this one. It's my most important one next to my um, uh, sunny side cell, and this is my birthday cell. Um, my birthday twin, Krista, and I are working on "My Day Complete" by Kathy Barrick. And I didn't bring the piece over, but um, we sectioned it off again to get sections done at a certain time. And I haven't done this section right here, which needs which needed to be done this last month. And then we moved back over to here, finish this up, and then this, and then finally that. So I'm on the home stretch. You know, I've got a lot of it done. I'm not too concerned about this one because most of the stuff left, except for the big bulky tree, tree trunk is pretty easy it's just letter stitching and just leaves and things like that um, I kept up really well on my funky bird and that all got done and so that was what I really knew I needed to keep up on section wise so I'm not too worried about this but it does it is going first on my queue on things to work on this week because um, it's the one cell that I am behind in the other ones I'm not behind yet I will be behind like in a couple weeks on some of them but this is the only one I really truly am behind on. So this will get work done this week in my plans. The other um, the other whips I'm going to work on is again cells, catch up on cells. Got to catch up on the next section of Sunny Side, get that done. Uh, the next section of Castle Homecoming by Frosted Pumpkin. I want to get my temperature Quaker up to date and keep up to date on that. So um, that's for um, I'm hoping to come back in a couple weeks maybe sooner and uh, so that's the only reason why this amount of plans I'm doing for you is just this I could be telling you my what my next whips are or whatever but um, for whip go but I'm not going to do that because the cells are taking precedence right now and will be worked on for the next week and a half to two weeks depending on how long it takes so, so anyway that's all of my stitching for you to see for those who are interested in seeing just stitching I'll say bye to you now um, you will miss my daily gratitude quote but you can fast forward if you want just to listen to that and those of you who want to see what I got accomplished at the lace convention and uh, there's a couple little items that I won actually that I can show you I will start this now um, one thing though that I did forget to show that I was just blown away when I went to and this is stitching related when I went to uh, this summer extravaganza at Silver Needle to meet um, Drawn Thread and um, also Best Seal of Summer House Stitch Works was also there designing um, it was a fun event it was a wonderful event I loved it and everything else but just during one of the days um, they pulled names out of all the names out of um, hat so to speak of everybody who had, was um, a part participant in the extravaganza and I believe there were seven people who were able they were going to be able to go over and choose a pair of nice scissors out of the case of silver needle you know their scissor case well guess what I was one of those seven it was really a shock so I went over and for my free scissors I got a pair of dobos now I already have Dovos, but I thought, oh man, oh man, to get a free pair of Dovos, no way. You know, I mean, yeah, I could have picked a pair of Wasses or a pair of, you know, one of the other ones or whatever, but I thought, oh man, no way in the world. So I picked up a pair of Dovos. This pair is a curved tip. It's gold. It's kind of an anniversary edition, I believe. You can you can tell me I'm wrong on this, anybody who knows, but I think it's an anniversary edition for a few years ago for Silver Needle for one of their anniversaries of being a shop. Because they've been a shop for a long time. But don't don't you know, that's I'm not positive sure on that one. But anyway, these are a pair of like the curved tips. So just such a pretty such a pretty pair. So and I got little case it says silver needle oh and it says right here duh where's my glasses I gotta find some glasses here 
I think it says, I'm holding it out really far, 35th anniversary. So, yeah, I think that's what it says. So it's their 35th anniversary. We'll stick it really close there. Maybe you guys can read it too. So, I was so excited. So this was just my, um, what I had to mention during my stitching. So, okay, on to lace now. Our lace um, convention was held in Reno, Nevada. I, to those of you who follow me all, all, all the time, you know that it was, but uh, just to let you know, um, it was at the um, Golden Nugget in Sparks. The funny thing about really kind of deja vu, interesting thing about this hotel was the first two or three days I was there, I kept thinking that this place looks so familiar to me, but why would it look familiar to me? Because I had never stopped there before for any reason that I knew of. Well, it was probably on the third day, all of a sudden it hit me when I was sitting in one of the restaurants. Cause, because even though they have remodeled things, a lot of the woodwork, a lot of the other work within it is still the same, the way it is laid out everywhere. I realized that um, my dad, who... Um, was really good at poker games and blackjack and everything else. He could go and win all kinds of places. He would go. This was one of the hotels, one of the casinos he went to every year to play poker and play blackjack and and do the swap. I mean the you know the um, all the other games there. And we he'd take us as as little kids, my sister and I. And it just brought tears to my eyes. I I just went, oh my goodness, because I felt. I felt them within there, within that hotel. I, I really did. I kept thinking, why do I keep feeling my parents here? They're, you know, and then I realized that was the reason that it, it finally hit me, that they used to spend every year there, took us there, and uh, I remembered the place. So so anyway, a special, special moment to me um, of remembering my parents. So the piece I took, I mentioned to you before, uh, that the piece I was taking was a piece to finish. Uh, my goal for my 2023 goal for lace making is to finish as many pieces as I can because I have a lot of whips and lace and um, I want to finish them as many as I can. So the piece I was taking was this one, which if you've seen me show this before, it's familiar to some of you. Um, this is um, called Idria Lace. It's a Slovenian lace from Slovakia. And uh, they use a lot of color in their lace, but they also do white too. They use a thicker thread and uh, it can be used on clothing, items of clothing, too. And uh, this is a design that um, the teacher, her name is Allie, um, designed this piece to have people learn, um, people who are more advanced in Idria, who've done regular Idria patterns, it helps them to get used to different fillings. And um, now it's kind of hard to show you. Um, I'll have to show you another piece at another time, but um, fillings are the middle part of a section of lace because the section is usually goes around like kind of round and tight, you know, swirls around like that with just particular threads going back and forth. But in between those parts where it's swirling around, there's parts that they call the fillings part where they fit in fillings. And these are different fillings that you could fit into an Idria lace pattern in the middle parts of the lace. But what she ended up doing is she took each filling and made it into the shape of the rainbow. And um, so then you could practice each filling and get a feeling for it on how it worked. And then what she did in between was just do the regular, um, you know, regular stitch that usually is in Idria. So it kind of, you know, shows shows the difference between the different fillings. So these are all different fillings. I went there. Um, I had finished up all of this except for a portion of this purple filling. I had actually done all of these little, little tiny fillings ahead of time, as well as all of this in another class. So I was going there to finish up this purple one and then start this one. And so I did accomplish that. Um, well, actually, at the convention, I only accomplished finishing this filling because it's, that filling is a really difficult filling to do. Um, it was really, really hard. And I had to spend a lot of time with the teacher 
to keep working on it to get it. But I finally did and finished that one up. So then when I was um, back home, I started up on this one, which I was able to start on my own. And then I started working this one down. So, And since, of course, as you can tell by this rainbow, this is actually the longest filling because it's the whitest part of the rainbow. This is taking me a while to, to do. I keep thinking I'm going to be done with it. And it just keeps going on and on and on. Well, I'm just barely into the middle of the of that particular row, but that's because that part of the rainbow is really, really the longest part, and the widest part. So anyway, that's what I did. Idria threads, they have a whole lot of bright colors. As you can see, I'm using a combination of blues and kind of a um, magenta kind of a red, I guess. And that's what I'm doing for that filling right there. So. Lots of fun. It's been really fun to do, but I'll be excited when it gets done. I keep thinking I'm closer to the end of it, and I'm not. And I'm going, no, I want to finish this, because that'll make my fourth my fourth lace piece finished in a year, which is really good. Uh, let's see. Oh, and again, I was a winner. <laughs> when I said I was a winner at Silver Needle with the Paradovo scissors, I was a winner again three times in a raffle in... Um, at the convention and the way they do raffles there is they um they just like each each day they'll have um certain things there to to give away and they'll have a little little bag next to it and so you buy however many tickets you want and then you stick them into the bags you want for maybe 10 or 15 items and then the next day they'll have another 10 or 15 items the next day they'll have another 10 or 15. so as i was going through i you know, every day I was putting some of my tickets into ones that weren't going to happen until like Friday or Saturday, and then other ones that were going to happen right away, that day or the next day. And I ended up winning three things, and I didn't really put in, I think you could get 20 tickets for, what was it, for 25 ticket tickets for $20? I think I only just bought those 25 tickets, and that was it and um, put them into different things and I'd wait till the next day and maybe put a couple in I didn't I didn't put them all in on the first day but still I didn't do anything that crazy or different and I won three items for that 20 bucks so first one was this handmade wooden bobbin holder bobbin winder actually we call it um, the man who does this Abby Woodworks he does beautiful beautiful wood turning he makes bobbins and just makes some gorgeous stuff. And so he donated this. And so this is like a, you can kind of hold it that way if you want or that way. And it just pulls the thread out so you can wind your bobbins. So anyway, I won that. And that was on the first day, I think, that somebody came up to me and they said, Colette, Colette, you won something. Okay, the third day I was there, either the third or the, yeah, I think it was the third day I was there. I won this. Anytime somebody has any bobbin lace figures, I always try for them because it's hard to get any bobbin lace figures places unless you travel to Bruges, Belgium or whatever. So this piece is a little wooden lace maker. It needs to be glued back here because it's the glue has come off. But this is just a little cute little wooden lace maker with her pillow. I won that. I was so jazzed. Look at she's so cute. So I'm going to add that to my um my little lace makers collection that I have. I'll show it to you sometime. I'll videotape in my lace room again sometime, but I was just so jazzed when I won that. Okay, so that was my second win. Um I decided, this is the first time I've ever done this, but it was because of a couple different reasons. I decided to leave a day early. Um, I knew how to do the rest of the filling on, on this lace piece. Um, so I would just be working for the three hours in the morning and then um, not really have anything to do the rest of the day on Friday. Because the way they had situated this particular convention, they had, well, because of some other things going on there, they had to have the banquet not on the last night, of the convention, but they had to have it on the day before the last night. So I went to the convention banquet on Thursday instead of Friday night. 
And so once I was done with my class on Friday, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I don't want to wait till Saturday to leave because I was driving up to Washougal to the river house. And then the next day after that, I was driving to my friend's house who's fighting a battle with cancer. And I knew that'd be really tiring. And I wanted to have a day to rest in between getting up to Washougal and then going up to her place, which is about three hours north of Washougal. So I opted to leave after my class on, well, no, actually before the class on Friday, I opted to leave. I just left on Friday morning instead of Saturday morning, which was the normal time to leave because it was already done with the banquet and everything. Anyway, I get this text at halfway driving up there. I'm like in the middle of Oregon somewhere and I was ready to stop for lunch anyway. So I pulled over and I look at the text and it's my lace teacher friend, Elizabeth. And she says, oh, guess what? You want another raffle? I <laughs> and I'm like, what? So she says, do you want me to bring it home? Because she lives like 20 minutes from me and she was driving too. And she says, I'll bring it home for you. It's no problem. I said, oh, thank you so much. I said, just take it home and I'll get it from you when I go to lace class when I get home. So this is the third and final raffle piece I won. And again, it's another lace maker. So look at this lace making doll. She's got lace on her pillow, lace all on her, um, her dress, lace on her hat, on her sleeves. And this is from Brussels because it says it right there. So somebody was, was, you know, downsizing or whatever else. And I was the recipient of it. Yay. So now I have another lace, ma lace maker that I can add to my collection. Oh, I was so excited. This is so fun. So those are my two two lace making lace making dolls or lace makers that I got. So along with this. So for 20 bucks in that like raffle thing, I did pretty well. So <laughs> so that along with my Dovo scissors, I boy do did I ever score tons. I just was amazing to me. I scored big time. So so anyway, that's what I've done for lace making. Uh, hopefully in another week or so, I'll be able to show you a finish on this Idria rainbow and then move on to another, another one I'm going to work on. Oh, I do have actually a couple bobbins here to show you real fast. I almost forgot. These are painted bobbins that are just for the um, convention. Every year they, um, they, do, they have a person paint bobbins and then um, they put the convention name who puts on the convention, what, what guild, and the dates, and the year, and the place. So here's one of the ones I got. And the reason why it shows for, I think these are, let me see. Doo -doo -doo. Are these Fox, or Forget-Me-Nots? I think these are Forget-Me-Nots. But it's because of um, Gold Country Lace Makers, they have a lot of that where they are. And they put on the the convention. And then here's the other bobbin I got. And it also has a picture of the flowers and then the IOLI, the convention, the date, and um, Sparks Nevada. So these these are two different kinds of bobbins, just real fast. Um, Midlands and um, Spangled. And um, you know, one of them is just a regular bobbin without anything on the edge, and then the spangled bobbins are traditional in England, and they put beads on the edge to weigh, to give them weight. The weight is here, the wideness on these ones. On this one, the weight to weigh it is the beads. And the reason why you want a little bit of weight is, is because then your threads stay more tight when you're actually working on them. So. Okay, guys, now I think I am done. Amazing. Um, thanks so much for all your kind comments, always. I just appreciate them, and I'm so grateful that you love to see the lace, the lace I show, um, and the stitching that I show, so thanks so much. Many thanks to people in their floss tubes who've mentioned my name. Um, it was quite a shock to me a couple times. I wasn't even expecting it at all, and, um, because it's weird. Sometimes on, I'm just going to make this comment. As a, as a videoer, and other Floss 2 video people know this too, sometimes they'll have like, if somebody mentions your name and your channel on their video, 
then it'll come up on yours. It'll come up on your own studio where you have your stuff. And it'll say, oh, somebody mentioned your name. So you can go on over there and um, look at who it is and tell them thank you and stuff like that. Well, and watch the video. Well, these last two times, I did not see anything come up on my, uh, on my um, studio part that my name was mentioned. So just a fast little shout out. Thank you so much, Jesse Marie. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. She mentioned me a couple times in a couple of her videos and and I did not see it on my, you know, on any of my um, studio stuff. And and I only saw it because I love Jessie Marie and I love to watch her. So it was it was like it's weird to all of a sudden hear your name and you weren't expecting it. So anyway, um, again, thank you so much, Jessie Marie. It's so sweet. Um, so. Thank you for all your comments, everybody. Thank you. I always love reading your comments, and I try to I try to answer as much as I can. I appreciate it. So grateful for all of you. And to end it with gratitude, of course, since I'm so grateful for all of you, I'm going to end with a gratitude quote. Um, I saw this one, and I thought this was appropriate since um, one of my FOs was my Quaker bees. <laughs> so you can see there's a... Honeybee with the honeycomb. Looks familiar, huh? Um, this says, hope is the only bee that makes honey without flowers. So remember that. If you have hope, you can make things happen. Special things happen. Just hope for them. They will happen. And um, you don't need anything else to make them happen. You know, it's like the honey needs, honeybee needs honey to make, you know, I mean, it needs flowers to make honey happen. But with hope, we don't need that, you know. We can make it without. So, so I encourage you all to look for the beauty in every day. And um, love you guys so much. Thank you. And um, I'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Bye. Mm -hmm.